I have a common question to the speakers here. What is the technology shift happening for prefab, PEB, and modular construction? Lavina, we would like to have your inputs first. So basically, the challenges that are associated with the increasing demand for PEB and prefab construction include, I think, uh, supply chain constraints. Then you need to have skilled labor you know, who are specialized in doing this kind of work, anyone won't do. Then all these labor shortages who are again skilled, as I said, we need skilled people. Then there are certain regulatory and permitting hurdles that, you know, restrict this kind of construction. For example, that your structure, the sizes of the uh, beams and columns are so big that you know you need certain timings for them to be transported from the factory till the site. Then besides that, you have cost considerations. Then you have uh, the how do you balance the design flexibility? Because as per the current scenario, there's a fixed way in which we will uh, design our structures, knowing that it is prefab. Like in the case of RCC, we can make any kind of designs, and you know. The same flexibility is not there for a prefab construction. You need, you know, there are some rigid things that we have to stick by. So that is, I think, uh, the challenges we face currently. Uh, but could you please enlighten us with the technology that is helping to, you know, shift the face of the construction and prefab PEB industry today? The technology say we have, you know, currently, if you see in a in, in this prefab construction, we have different type of technologies playing. One you could say is 3D printing. Yeah, that would be the actual printing that you're doing. So uh, besides that, now in the 3D printing, you can use any kind of materials like we use in RCC. We need concrete. So you use concrete for construction, right? Then we have the different technologies that help uh, aid the construction process. Like you have BIM. So if you opt for uh, building, uh, you know, uh, building modeling. So in that you can actually, actually, you know, uh, plan out everything on your drawing board and then go on to implement because there are many, uh, many problems happening at site, which you tend to overlook because there is so much planning to do. And uh, when, when you apply for this BIM uh, software, so all this, uh, all this, uh, what is the hindrances are taken care of and the process becomes more smoother. You have AI technology also. Now, if you integrate AI with AutoCAD, it gives you a better result. It's faster performance and uh, you have one technology called LIDAR. I don't think it's used more, uh, more in India, but it is supposed to be, you know, a, measure, uh, a term for measurement, like when you go for site surveying, you have certain kind of measurements you need to take. With this, it is more faster. So these are the kind of technologies presently that we are looking at. Thank you so much for answering that, Lavina. Rahul, would you like to add in to what Lavina has just said? Hello, all. My name is Rahul. I'm from Roomcraft. See, I think uh, she has covered most of the thing. Prefab is a very generalized term in the market. So there are a lot of technologies already present in prefab. It can be RCC precast. It can be steel. It can be wood. But I feel, yeah, so implementing BIM in all these technologies should be a good thing because the shortage of skilled labor in India we, ultimately, whatever technology we, as owners or promoters, we implement, it has to be, it has to be taken off forward by the staff on the site, in the factory, everywhere. So I feel that technology right now is very crude in India. We are not to the level of US and um, uh, Europe what they already use. But yeah, technology. There are a lot, lot of, lot of technology which needs to be implemented in India in prefab, which I think will in coming years is getting popular. As of now, also is very popular. Now people are, people are the customers who end customer is uh, knowledgeable. They have all the technology insights 
from Google, from they've been traveling around the world. So I feel that uh, prefab is getting popular. And, techno and just implementation of BIM and AI into these, uh, whatever we are doing right now, should should be very, uh, very is required in the future to make it more process oriented rather than uh, labor oriented or staff oriented. It needs to be very, it needs to be process oriented. Totally agree with you what you have said. Um, moving on to Hamshavadan, you would like to have your inputs too. Inevitable that we do less and less work on site and more and more of the building components are made in a factory. So the shift majorly is happening towards manufacturing. So buildings in the, of the future will be manufactured and assembled on site. So this is the shift that is, that is happening. Uh, because of our intrinsic and maybe it's a primordial desire, like basically buildings are human nests, right? We, it's our nest. The bird builds it on a tree using twigs. We build, we build it with the way we, we have learned. So our involvement of our imagination of building somehow forces us, has forced us to do it on the spot like other animals and birds by gathering material and building it. The technology is only supporting us, but the time has moved. All other industries have moved to manufacturing. This has remained bafflingly old fashioned how i in my presentation i'll show you how we have not moved an inch in technology over the past thousands of years even the most modern technology i will show it to you 3d printing is 100 years old so anyway so i would say the shift is off site construction construction that is less and less to do with hand less and less to do with the site and more and more to do with components that are made in, in a factory. Thank you so much, Hamsa Vadan, for answering that. Moving on to my next question. Lavina, can you enlighten us with the best materials that have been used in prefab, in PEB, in regards to climate efficiency and durability? In, in, in the projects that I have done, the prefab projects that I have done, we have tried to uh, experiment with a lot of uh, materials like besides the metal construction of the building, the structure of the building, like in for the walls, you can go it for uh, go in for already existing panels, ready-made panels for walls. The same can be used even for your slab, which we have done in our buildings and our projects are vetted by IIT Mumbai. So, uh, you know, so instead of a proper slab casting process, which is a long, uh, long drawn process, so instead of doing that, you can quickly assemble that slab, which is, which comes ready-made. You also have other kinds of slab, which is already ready and you could use besides the panel. So then we go ahead and use wall panels that doubles up as a wall instead of your uh, typical, you know, Sephorex uh, blocks or your brick walls, you know, all those kinds of, of thing is cut short. And the time is just a matter of some days and you can assemble a four-story building. It's just a matter of some days because it is all, uh, you know, uh, tongue and groove. You just, uh, just go on assembling it and that's about it. The same now, uh, we have prefab staircase as well. So if you are going in for, say, four-story, you just place your order in an off-site factory. It's already made. It comes to your site and you assemble. So seeing all this, now the construction process has become so much more faster that what would take months now takes weeks. So I believe... You know, we are we are really going in for fast process. Maybe it's not that fast in India, but we are adopting. That's very insightful, Lavina. Thank you for sharing your views and fostering a deeper understanding about the materials and how we can utilize in various aspects. Keeping this in mind, Hamsha Vardhan, I have a question for you. What role does sustainability play with this kind of uh, materials that we are using? How can we achieve sustainability in this growing prefab and modular construction? So I have uh, noticed that there is a... See, human beings and sustainability, they are very far. 
So to bring them together is a lot of hard work. We as humans are uh, somehow forced to alter things. Material, nature, give us give me a lake, I convert it into a bus stop, things like that. So, so we don't leave things the way they are, right? So this is one. Secondly, human activity is excessively damaging to the nature. We do more than what we should be doing. So sustainability is not just a word to be spoken about. It is an inevitable, it is something that we cannot neglect anymore. And we have to spend money there. We no longer can be just saying, I will save money. I don't care if the earth goes to dog. This is the most foolish attitude because we are burning our own house. We are muck, putting muck inside our own house just to save some, some money or just to save some effort. So sustainability is no longer just going to be uh, enough to be just a word to be spoken about. We need to uh, think deeply about it. And many of the uh, methods of construction that we have romantically associated with sustainability, for example, terracotta. I can tell you that terracotta is one of the man's first synthetic material. Terracotta is non-biodegradable. Now, you might be wondering, what the hell? Yes. If you look at all the prehistoric uh, leftovers, you will only see pottery and other stuff made of uh, terracotta that has remained. Everything else is gone. Wood is eaten up. Metal is corroded. So terracotta, even though it is it is a natural material that we have just burnt it, and then, it, then but it transforms. It will not go back to soil for a million years. So it is, in a way, a kind of old plastic, right? So just because it looks nice, feels nice, doesn't mean that is also sustainable. So what looks like non-sustainable, like say steel, wood, for example, wood is the most sustainable material. Now, you will not like it if I say wood is the most sustainable, because that's the only material that humans can plant a seed, look after it, wait long enough, you get the material. Can we grow steel? Can we grow coal? Can we grow anything else? No, it is what is there only we can use. Whereas trees can be grown. So tree is the most sustainable. So this all sounds upside down to what we imagine to be sustainable. Just because there's a brick house, that is not sustainable. So sustainable is mud house, yes. Bamboo, yes. Adobe, yes. These are some of the sustainable technologies. But this cannot be scaled. It is like saying uh, going by horse is more sustainable, not by cars. Therefore, everybody should have horses. So it cannot be done. If human society cannot go back. So I would say what we feel is sustainable may not be sustainable. What we feel is not sustainable may be sustainable. In fact, many of the LEED certified uh, green building, platinum rated, gold rated, etc., are steel and glass buildings. How come? Right? So this is the question. So sustainability imagines uh, use of energy, reusability, long life of the material, repurposability, and so many other factors are there. Not just a romantic feel, like it feels uh, sustainable. Is, is a romantic notion. Real sustainability comes from hard measuring, measuring of uh, the embodied carbon, the energy usage, and so many other metrics are there. When you compare those things, only then you can tell a building is sustainable or not. Not by our romantic uh, imagination, right? So there is sustainability is, is a central to human survival, survival. It is not something that we can debate. Thank you for sharing your expertise on sustainability. Moving on to Rahul. Rahul, how do you foresee the increasing demand for prefab and PEB? And is it creating demand for a skilled workforce? This is a very good question. Prefab demand is increasing in the market because the end customer is tired of waiting for years to get the project completed. They have to wait for the project to get the, the time, time taken for construction, the unavailability of skilled labor, then the material wastage, then the quality of the material which is being put inside. In, a, in an RCC building, because in India, you, you know, everything happens. So there's no, nothing called a, a, a certified building because the certification, whatever is happening is before the building is constructed. But there is no agency or no department who certifies a building after it is constructed. So, but in case of prefab, because it is all well designed and then manufacturing is happening in the factory, everything is taken care of. The strength of the building, everything is pre-designed. So demand is increasing. People, they want quick, quicker construction. They don't want to wait years. And they know about the any kind of prefab construction. They are very well versed about the technology. They, they go on the Google. They search for prefab construction technology. It can be steel. It can be wood. It can be precast. And everything, everything is available online. 
and plus even if they want to see a building then people like all of us they have we have demos to show we have projects to showcase so they, that gives them the confidence and i feel uh, the major time major thing is the time taken because everyone is a, in his hurry these days people have money to spend but they don't want to wait for years so prefab demand will increase in the future it is increasing we have seen we have seen increase in our case also when we launched our modular construction four years back it's been 15 years we've been doing prefab but modular when we shifted from on site to off site we were very skeptical in the beginning that how will people accept it like standardizing the designs standardizing the layouts and standardizing the materials we are offering so we were very skeptical about that in the in the beginning but then people accepted it because like we we cater to all the farm houses holiday homes and hotels so they are happy taking standardized products but they want a quicker solution so we see a increasing demand every year and would you like to share inputs about if this uh, demand will create any demand for skilled workforce see there is no school or college which is teaching prefab to the to the workers in india we we can't employ mtex or btex to do the construction in india because it's too costly too expensive so it skill labor is ultimately the job of a manufacturer to create skill labor like what we have done we we in we developed a technology and then we trained our people how to do it so the, that's the most important and once we have everything is like a factory made or off site construction it's it becomes very easy to train people because then they have to just nut and bolt or do whatever installation on site they don't have to look into the little detailing of the project like what is a mix of rcc and what is how much uh, reinforcement they are putting they don't need to take care of that so skill labor we have to ultimately the manufacturer has to develop skill labor and that's i don't think there's a shortage of skill labor it's just about the training yeah so i don't feel that's a problem right now thank you for sharing your perspective moving on to hamsa vardhan now one of the challenges or that is faced in pv or prefab is transportation so how do transportation constraints the affect uh, the feasibility and cost effectiveness of a modular or you know prefab project so this is again a vestige of our ancient primordial i think hangover because we feel that structures have to be like built like dam or like a flyover or a bridge or something like that whereas we human shelters don't have to be so damn heavy right it can be light there are technologies that that allow us to build fairly strong comfortable uh, thermally insulated energy efficient buildings like they have been doing in other countries without having to uh, always use heavy heavy material it is not required so there is over engineering here playing out i feel because even in even even in uh, rcc if somebody has to use rcc there are many ways in which it can be made lighter by hollow coring and uh, using light lightweight or using hybrid uh, composite materials etc so yeah so right now because we we have not innovated enough we are still carrying this heavy weight and burden of these heavy girders and stuff like that i feel it is unnecessary there are many ways in which we can mitigate this because transportation is also polluting the more we transport the more machinery we use in construction the more we are polluting the more energy we are using please understand there's a direct correlation to energy usage and all these other materials so i would say for where not required engineers and architects should specify lighter material so that the transportation and other thing handling becomes easier uh where it is a infrastructure where you are building bridges etc i suppose weight uh, is a uh, something that cannot be avoided moving on to rahul my next question to you do you think this modular construction and prefabrication technologies will eventually roll over the traditional construction methods i don't think not in another 500 years but uh, it will be a mix of yeah it will it will increase mm -hmm. gradually yeah because still we are long way to do construction of like normal residential houses because people still have a blockage or in their mind that uh, steel steel buildings are or any other kind of buildings are less stronger uh, not strong enough for them to last 50 years but yeah it will take some time but gradually it is increasing 
but i don't think uh, it will be completely like rcc can be replaced by any other prefab form of construction thank you so much for sharing your thoughts um lavina my next question to you when it comes to customization and you know design flexibility do you think prefab and modular construction methods and you know, they are they give you more options in comparison to traditional construction it all depends on if you're looking at buildings and you feel you have to customize the building i think there's a lot of flexibility there and since i've already worked on rcc construction as well so i can tell you yes any design we can go for it the same i can also tell you for uh, prefab construction because i have construction a couple of buildings g plus four story buildings in prefab and i know there is flexibility there as well it all depends on it all depends on your designing abilities of your architect i would say because whatever prefab buildings we have constructed is it doesn't look like a prefab like there are no metals visible you know it looks like a proper rcc construction only when you go inside do you have a look at the beams and columns and you see metal even those can be hidden you know by cement sheets or something of that sort giving it a more rcc look so yeah. i feel yeah both have their own flexibility yes i would like to just butt in and saying uh, like materials don't have a limitation it is basically our imagination that that and and of course budgets and requirement so it's a it's a sweet uh, balance between all these things you need to budget by uh, balance the budget balance the requirement balance the aesthetics balance the function so per se there are limitations and there are no limitations it's like saying a canvas for a painter there is a limitation but without canvas he cannot paint so canvas canvas is both the limitation and the unlimited possibility all at once together so i think that's what architecture also offers. yeah i agree to that Rahul, would you like to add into what Hamza Vardhan and Lavina has said? Yeah, I feel. Uh, see, the first uh, criteria is how the how the building is being designed by an architect, and I've been working in steel since a long time. I feel steel has the most uh, options of flexibility in terms of construction because steel is very versatile. We can bend, we can turn, we can weld, we can make it to any shape. Like longer spans, that is not possible in RCC. Like you see a banquet hall or a factory, it's always made in a steel steel construction because you can we can go longer spans in steel. But RCC gets too expensive, too heavy, and it's not required. So steel has more flexibility than any other material, which is being uh, used and proven worldwide now since many years. Yeah, and plus uh, if we if we do a hybrid building, it can go multi-story steel. So there's no steel doesn't have any limitations. RCC, I feel there are still limitations. But steel doesn't have any limitations as such. It's all about designing. Yeah. Thank you so much.